Hello and welcome to this Heart of Fear video. This is the Grand Empress Shakzir. This is the last boss in the Heart of Fear. And her first ability that you can see is called Dread Screech. And what this does is it lets loose a Screech attack on two random players and inflicts about 80,000 damage to them and anybody that is within five yards of that person will also get inflicted so it's good to spread out especially the ranged. Another ability she has that you can see she spawned is those dissonance fields. Those are fields that the only way to kill them or the way that you should kill them is to stack your casters or ranged around one field and then the other because these fields depreciate health depending on what spells are being cast around them and once they erupt and go down to zero health they inflict everybody with 200,000 damage so it's best if you can split those explosions as far apart as you can. So you don't want to do what we're doing now and one's going down a little faster than the other but it's good to give your healers time to catch up. Another ability that the tanks want to watch out for is a debuff. The eyes of the Empress. She'll put these on the target she has and you don't want this stack to get up to five times five or six times I believe because if it reaches the maximum you will get turned into a servant and you can see that one of our tanks did and have to kill them and it's just a bad deal. So you want the tanks to taunt off each other so that they don't get transformed into a servant. She will also inflict a cry of terror on a random person and it will fear them and cause some damage over time. This is phase two of the fight. She will summon adds and they, the adds are Windblade and Reavers. And what you want to make sure is that if you aren't comfortable with your heals and tanking especially, you don't want to tank all of them on top of each other like we are because then they get a 30% damage buff. The Windblade adds cannot be tanked, they fixate on a random person, so that person just has to kite around. But, they also can coat the ground with a sticky resin, and then anybody that passes through that gets a debuff, takes some damage and slowed movement speed. But when it comes into contact with that person, it will then slide off. And if the resin stacks up too much, if too many people run through it, it causes an amber trap, which basically encases you in amber and does a bunch of damage every second or so. So basically don't run into those spots. The Reavers, which are tankable, do some poison abilities. They will poison the armor of the tank but this is actually good because anybody who is near the tank with this poison armor gets a buff and they do f randomly 50,000 damage more nature 50,000 more nature damage and then the ad also does some conal abilities and hurls poison bombs around just watch out for that more damage abilities
after you kill all those ads, you can see the boss comes back and it is a repeat of the first phase. We're doing better with those dissonance fields now. One's a lot farther down than the other, which is good. remember, especially the range, do you want to spread out so that those screech or sonic screeches or whatever their dread screech don't hit more people than they have to. And you'll know when phase two is about to start when she'll summon the adds, her energy bar above her health, once that gets to zero, she will start her phase two and the adds will come out. Her cry of terrorability, cry of terror, is what it's called. It also causes players. Uh, it inflicts one player and puts terror on them, and then it causes that player to inflict about 50k damage every two seconds to other players. So that's just another dot you have to worry about, mainly for the healers. Alright, here is phase two again. These ads are coming out. The Windblade ads fixate on target, so be sure to run away from them. They can be CC'd and stunned and everything, so they're not too bad. You can also interrupt their uh, casted, cast ability. And then the Reavers, just remember that they will throw bombs at players, and they'll do a Conal ability in front of them, so there one of them just did it. So just don't stand in front of them. And then you can kind of see that green stuff, green uh, cloud on some of the players. That's from the tank. That's that buff that gives you uh, that chance to proc more damage. It's kind of hard to see, but it's mainly around the main tank. Now we got all the ads down, and we get you get a little bit of a break in between phases, so it's a good time to heal up the raid and get some of your mana back. After those ads come in, it should just be one more phase, and then you one more of the phase ones, and then it'll go into phase three. So now we're just trying to burn her down to 30% and then we'll get into phase 3. Alright, we have started phase 3, 
and she will still put the debuffs on the tank in this phase, so that's just one of those abilities she does throughout the fight. But she gets some new abilities because she gets influenced by the Shah of Fear. She'll use this ability called Calamity, which she uses often. And she will do damage to a player and it will do 50% of their current health, so it's a pretty big hit. It won't kill them, but it will do 50% of their current health. She's casting another ability, Consume Terror. You could kind of see a big portion of the floor turn to a glowing purple. And that is avoidable, but it is a very large area, so probably everybody won't be able to avoid it. That up. You should avoid it if you can. And basically, what it does is it inflicts 200,000 damage to anybody in the cone and then fears them for 8 seconds. There she's casting it again. We got feared. Luckily, since we have multiple shamans, the totem worked great to dispel the fear. We'll also do an ability called Massing Darkness. This will hit a random player and do 50,000 damage to them. And once it hits that person, it will hit an additional player every 6 seconds until it hits all the players. So that's basically one of those that it'll hit one person, then it just bounces around and hits everybody. It's not too much damage, but it just all adds up with everything else. And that is every six seconds it will hit another person. And then one more ability she will do is a Visions of Demise. It inflicts on two random players, and these players are in fear, and do 30,000 damage to all players within 8 yards for 20 seconds. So basically you just want to run away from those players. Hopefully this video helps, and I want to thank you for watching, and good luck with your boss fight.